So one of the things that makes PowerShell such a powerful, I want to say operating system, but I'll use the right word, such a powerful shell for manipulating our operating system and working with it is the fact that it lets us string commands together. Now, we've actually been doing this a long time without realizing it. So let me do this. I'm going to do a get service here. I'm going to give you an example of how we string commands together. I do get service and that gets me a list of all of my services and they just go scrolling by. So if I want to view it one page at a time, I would do get service and pipe it to more. And that pipe is right above, right above your inner key on your keyboard is a backslash. And if you do shift that, you'll see that little vertical bar. So that's our pipe. So what this does is it paginates our display for us and it gives us to it gives it to us one page at a time. Clear the screen, pull that back up so we can see it. So here's what's happening. I am taking my, I'm running my first command. I'm taking the output of that first command and I'm piping it to my second command. And so the output of this becomes the input for this. Okay, and we've been doing that with more for a while. But in a sense, what we're doing is we're stringing commands together. And it allows us to manipulate the output of our commands as we use the output of one command as the input for the, another command. And it gives us a lot of capability. And as we work with PowerShell more and more, we're going to find more ways to use this particular technique. But I want to give you an example of how we can find this, how we can make this useful for us. So I'm in my scripts folder. I'm going to do a get child item. And I've created a CSV file here that's called services.csv. So I'm going to pull it up in Notepad so you can see it. And basically, it's four objects. So this top line is going to set the property. Uh, so the property is going to be name. And then I have four lines. And each one's going to be a separate object. And then we're going to have one property name. So if I import, see if I could type correctly, import CSV services.csv there we'll see property and our four objects now the idea behind this is let's say I want to monitor these objects that are my services.csv well I can do that by stringing commands together so I'm going to do I'll just hit my up arrow import services or import csv services.csv I'm going to pipe that to get service and there we go we just we take the output of this command, which is going to be these four objects, and we pipe them to get service. And the get service recognizes those, looks at the name, says, oh, I bet they want to pull these services with this name. So it pulls those four services. Now, the cool thing about that is if I ever wanted to add or remove services to be monitored, I just edit my services.csv file. So it's an example of where we do that. Uh, but here we're piping commands together. Now, most of the time that we pipe commands together, it's going to be this. Um, put our first command, pipe it to the second command, pipe it to the third, fourth, fifth, however many commands we use. Now, that's most of the time, but we can't always do that. Sometimes we have to do this a little bit differently. And let me give you an example of what that would look like. It would be get service, and then I'm going to do in parentheses import dash csv services.csv. Now this actually isn't going to work. I'm going to need a little bit more to and we'll talk about why that is a little bit later on. We're, I don't want to confuse the issue right now. So I'm going to pipe that to select. I'm going to put a space there. I don't need it, but it looks better. Easier to read. Select object expand property name. All right, so here's what's going to happen. By the way, this select object expand property, don't worry about that now. We're going to deal with that a little bit later on. So don't stress about that. But here I did my import first. I used the input or the output from this as input for this. Here I flipped it around. Uh, I'm ready to get service first, but then we use the algebraic rule. If it's in parentheses, do that first. So the PowerShell shell looks in and says, get service. Oh, hold on. Before I do that, I need to run this. And so it imports the services and then selects object and expands the property name to turn that from an object into uh, text and then execute. And it does the same thing.
So it's just two different ways of stringing commands together. Sometimes one is easier, like in this case, this one would be easier. Sometimes the other one is easier. Sometimes um, this way is the only way to do it. And we're actually going to look at an example of that in a subsequent video here in a little bit. But I want you to see the two different ways that we can typically string PowerShell commands together to give us more capability and flexibility with PowerShell.